Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to all of you. I'm Shelley, your host for the evening, and take immense pleasure in welcoming you all to the launch of the most authoritative handbook on small and medium businesses, Business World SME White Book 2012-13, presented by Reliance Commercial Finance. And now to commence with the evening, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to invite on stage the editor of Business World, Mr. Proshanjit Datta, to kindly deliver the welcome address. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the launch of the fourth edition of the Business World SME White Book. Over the past few years, the SME White Book has emerged as one of the most important annual titles in the Business World Books and Guides portfolio. While big business often takes up a disproportionate share of attention, it is the three crore small and medium enterprises in the country that provide crucial fuel for our economic growth. By some estimates, small and medium enterprises account for over 35% of Indian manufacturing output and almost 40% of the exports. As India's premier business magazine, Business World has always been conscious of the role that small and medium enterprises play in the country's economy and has devoted attention to this sector through publications such as the SME White Book, through profiles of SME entrepreneurs in the magazine and also through contests such as the annual Young Entrepreneur Awards. I won't take up much more of your time. Enjoy the evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Datta. And now moving ahead, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite on stage the Chief Executive Officer, Reliance Commercial Finance, Mr. K. V. Srinivasan, on stage to address us. Sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor and privilege to be standing here and uh, welcoming you to this uh, unraveling of the SME White Book. It has been the third year that uh, Reliance Commercial Finance has partnered Business World in this endeavor. Uh, I believe uh, that in the globalized environment, the theme which is uh, SMEs, the new world order, is very topical and I do hope that the SMEs uh, who are the target audience for this book would find it extremely useful. As an organization which is focused upon uh, uh, extending financial assistance to the SMEs and as an organization who has disbursed over the past five years almost 30,000 crores to the self-employed and the SME segments. My learning in the past five years has been that while funding has been the greatest desire of uh, most of the SMEs, the greatest need that they have is information and knowledge and how to manage their business. So that journey is not complete without somebody actually hand-holding uh, their, their, uh, them and, and basically taking them to the next level. And there are actually very few institutions which are focused upon training uh, the SMEs and imparting knowledge and information to them. This endeavor is but a small step in that direction. And ladies and gentlemen, now the floor is all set for the panel discussion and hand over to our moderator, Mr. Rajiv Dubey, to conduct the panel discussion on SMEs is the new world order. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and a warm welcome to the, this panel discussion, SMEs in the new world order. I'd like to welcome each one of our panelists uh, for the discussion today. Uh, many believe that even our current GDP growth of about 5.5% would have been impossible if it wasn't for the entrepreneurial small and medium sector. So let me request each of the panelists to spend about two minutes each uh, to bring some perspective to the new enterprise creation and the general state of the SMEs uh, in the new world order. This is very important uh, question to begin with, but uh, as an official coming from the government, I believe that the entrepreneurs of the India and the people who want to begin with with some vibrant ideas. <clears throat> they have their ideas in their mind, but they have a lot of constraints to begin with. Today, <clears throat> if one has to start with a project or 
to start with an entrepreneur. I think he has to go through almost 30 to 40 departments to get the various kind of the permits and the certificates and so many other constraints he has to face. I think this is the one of the biggest challenge I feel that the process to establish or to, to create a new entrepreneur should be simplified, it should, should be accessible even to the person who is not very much educated. The EM filing system probably you might be knowing about that if one has to start with one, one entrepreneur, uh, it means any enterprise, uh, it has to be registered with state agencies as the state, uh, the, the industry is the state subject. Today we are having only five states where the EM filing is through online. So the process, the, the certifications, the need of the permits and to tackle with so many other agencies, these are very uh, vital points that which, which, is, which is hampering to entrepreneurs to begin with. Of course, as you have already mentioned that <clears throat> economic slowdown is one of the important issues which is affecting to start with the new entrepreneurs, but still uh, since the SMEs are dealing with the domestic market, I feel that uh, still there is a huge scope to begin with. But of course, if, they, if more hand, hand holding and the simplification of the process is taken care of by the state governments and the, uh, and the, and the union government, I think that will boost the uh, entrepreneurs to begin with. Mr. Adhavad. Hello. Uh, good evening, everybody. When I look at uh, small and medium enterprises over the last 15 years of my uh, doing IndiaMart.com, I see a very, very different uh, India emerging post uh, 2000 uh, because of the information communication education sector, because of the telecom media and technology sector. If you really see these two TMT and ICE sector have really opened up Indian economy by a great uh, margin over the last uh, decade or so. And where is all this consumerism or all this uh, wannabe uh, going to be filled up from? It is going to be filled up from the MSMEs only. Small and medium enterprises, the way I see them, they are the bridge between uh, rural produce and uh, the consumers. They are the bridge between the corporate uh, produce and the consumers. They are sitting in the middle of rural produce being converted into finished goods and finished good again being redistributed to the consumers. So SMEs, India today requires many, many SMEs and uh, a growth of SME creation itself has doubled up uh, over the last few years. Uh, India had uh, less than seven, 6 million SMEs. By the 2006-7 uh, census, uh, India was supposedly was having about, you know, 26 million SMEs. So if you really see pre-2000 and post-2000, the growth of MSME creation itself uh, has doubled up from 5-6% uh, to about 12-14%. And here, now coming to the 2010, 8, 9, 10, 11, the only thing that still is surviving and growing is probably technology. It all uh, information communication technology sector which fueled this whole growth and the only thing which is still surviving is technology. Internet is growing, Facebook is growing, more and more uh, technology is happening, more and more BPO is happening, more and more services are happening. So we can see for sure that technology is going to be the future the way businesses, businesses are going to communicate with each other, the way businesses are going to access the markets or access the technology, that is going to change. And internet is here to stay and internet is really changing the way SMEs are operating. If you see, technology was hardly available for SMEs, but today SMEs have a technology, availability of technology at the click of a button without uh, really worrying about uh, uh, installation oblique virus without really worrying about uh, uh, capital cost versus uh, maintenance. 
so this cloud computing is really bringing technology to in the hands of smes otherwise uh, there was only corporates or um, uh, consumer based uh, thing so i would say that this is the greatest time for msmes to flourish in india and i would urge the government to keep doing the simplification drive and keep providing us more and more better infrastructure be it uh, roads be it power and be it telecom <laughs> so i guess telecom a lot of it has been done uh, i'm sure if uh, some something can be done towards power and roads uh, it will be much more uh, beneficial and more simplification thank you thank you the smes uh, occupy a very important place in the economy is is a very facile statement uh, the way i see the sme sector actually growing is that uh, you know the importance of the uh, sustainability of the business i think that is something which is uh, currently being focused upon uh, when we had a situation where the earlier generation started off uh, their business in a small way and they were by and large content at remaining small you know i'm i'm achieving my reasonable goals and you know i don't want to grow beyond that used to be the kind of refrain why should i become big and uh, that mentality is slowly changing with the advent of the newer generation who are obviously far more uh, better educated and who have a certain uh, sense of idealism which is far in excess of what their uh, fathers used to have uh, now therefore what's really happening is that the alacrity of the businesses to latch on to newer opportunities to explore opportunities for getting external funding and therefore the uh, need or the urge for them to grow in scale and size is becoming more and more evident than what it was today i think the speed at which let's say a 5 crore company 5 crore turnover company grows to a 1000 crores is now far uh, maybe double or triple what it was earlier you know it is take 25 years to get to that level today it's taking 5 or 6 and people are taking pride in achieving that kind of scale and growing beyond what is just the definition of an sme now that brings in two three issues which we need to contend with or rather the sector needs to contend with one is of course that an external capital also comes with certain strings attached now what are those strings it has it is not just in terms of giving better return to the external investor or to the funding partner but more important than that maintenance of a certain strength of governance which is very critical the moment you say okay i'm going to approach a vc for funding and and enhancing my capital requirement the first thing that he looks for is that do you really have the ability to sustain your business do you really have the uh, belief in actually taking your business from being a very small to a medium and a large kind of an enterprise and so therefore what is your uh, predilection towards maintaining proper books of account and paying taxes or are you the guy who is going to be a fly by night operator looking for shortcuts just to avoid tax and do you really listen to your old munim ji or are you really trying to uh, you know take expert advice in in uh, growing your business further the second factor is that what is the sustainability of the people power that they have is the enterprise able to attract and retain good talent uh, and and grow beyond their own in, uh, personal faculties to grow the business so these two three are becoming very very critical external capital importance of governance and acquisition and retention of good manpower i think these are the three things which will uh, basically help the smes to grow and uh, the fourth trend that we are seeing is that earlier business cycles used to take 5 years and 10 years in the making today we see cycles actually turning around in 2 to 2 and a half years so this volatility that is becoming inbuilt into a increasingly globalized kind of an economy uh, necessitates these three things to be actually put into place for the smes to grow mr dubey you started of the discussion with a very interesting remark that uh, smes in the new world order especially characterized currently by a chaotic markets and economic slow slow down and resulting into protectionism rise of protectionism no, across the economies and this is a very interesting and very pertinent remark to begin the discussion we will look at from india's perspective and especially if you have two touch stones of china and india which is our uh, one of the biggest competitors the china's uh, growth in the last 20 25 years has been driven by uh, investment and exports whereas india's growth has been largely driven by its domestic markets and domestic consumption okay. now in the economic slowdown uh, especially when the countries are turning protectionist 
India stands the best chance to retain its growth because the growth is fueled by internal dynamics, especially the domestic markets. So that's the good part. But at the same time, what we need to remember is that during this best of the period, we have two poster boys of success, uh, two sectors. One is auto sector, other is pharmaceuticals. Auto sector, if you look, that one of the most important uh, reason why we became so big in the auto sector is our policy of auto policy, which is called indigenization policy, whereby every company coming in India had to uh, achieve a certain level of indigenization over a period of time. That resulted into development of technology or bringing in technology in India. That's why the mar market demand that was created was, uh, you can say, fulfilled by rise of Indian companies. Similar was the case with pharmaceutical also. One of the major reasons why pharmaceutical rose was because of the patent policy that we followed till 2005. Till 2005, India was among the few countries in the world that allowed only uh, the process patents, not the product patent. And because of that, a large number of small and medium enterprises could enter into re-engineering and reprocessing, and that's why we produced world's largest uh, genetic markets in the world. On the other hand, there is an extreme of electronic sector where we entered into a global undertaking, a global agreement of zero rate of duty, thereby killing our entire electronic sector. Yeah. We are almost completely dependent, sorry, completely dependent on import in electronic sector. So we have these two success and I would say uh, not so successful stories in front of us and we can draw the lesson and that's the challenge. And the challenge is that we need to have a strategy. Where we are faltering today is because the SME sector also is that we don't have a strategy. Unless you have a strategy, we cannot guarantee or especially in the future that how uh, this immense opportunities that is emerging in India because of the domestic consumption would be fulfilled by the Indian companies, by fulfilled by Indian SMEs. Otherwise, if we don't follow a strategy, ultimately everything would be improved. And that does not augur well for us. Uh, for the, you can say, either in a, in a manner which is sustainable or for the SMEs also. I would, I would say that, uh, you know, uh, today uh, Luminous is, is one of the examples of an SME company uh, which has today now moved from SME to becoming a large corporation. And as uh, KV just mentioned, that it's a, it is something that uh, I hope would be one of the growth and aspirational uh, examples of uh, of an SME today. The growth is new and we contribute and even outside country. The role of SME uh, and being uh, in the uh, gives you the opportunity to understand some of the needs better and you know the world today is talking about frugal engineering you know we we, 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 we read a lot about the Jugaad innovation I think this is what uh, is expected from the SMEs to be able to come out with those solutions which are unique for the country and 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 develop the solutions which fulfill those those needs that probably none of the other uh, larger corporations can do that and and do it at a cost that is uh, that is something which is which brings a lot of value to the indian customer and then not just doing that but you know taking it from india then to the to the rest of the world is is I would say uh, some of the challenges that you know an SME company uh, should surmount and 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 if we are able to do that I think it would be it would be a real success in this today's global world. The uh, the other thing is uh, I would say that while there is a role of the government and I think that's been that's been talked about. I also see role of larger enterprises in the country and uh, a lot of them where the, the growth of large corporations is dependent a lot on how well they develop yes, their, 
uh, their uh, SME yeah. resource base. And you know, whether you look at outsourcing, I mean, which is the in thing today, not just in terms of call centers, but also in terms of manufacturing. Uh, I think that uh, there is also a responsibility of the larger corporations in the country to create uh, that resource, to bring in that skill development, to also facilitate capital for the growth of uh, small and medium enterprises in the, in the, in the country. On the flip side, I think uh, it's, it's been mentioned by one of the panelists that we have to make sure that the SME companies are not you know, uh, hiding behind the size and being non-compliant. I think uh, that is something that uh, we have to make sure that, you know, uh, that uh, the, the rules are well respected and, and are followed, whether it's about environment, whether it's about financial, whether it's about legal or taxation. Okay, so you kind of preempted uh, the, my next question, but uh, I was coming to what would it take? Uh, maybe if you'd like to suggest two or three ideas, what would it take to make SMEs the force multipliers? Would you like to add to any of these, uh, what you've just said? or uh, So I, I think some of them have been, uh, have been talked about. Yeah. Uh, clearly, facilitation of capital, yeah. uh, which is to be done both by the government and also take the, the role of large enterprises to do that. Yeah. Uh, it is about uh, skill development. Uh, and, and technology has, has, has already been mentioned by Mr. Agarwal. So, uh, to me, uh, these two uh, are, I would say, some of the multipliers and of course the government has to continue to do, you know, the other parts of education, you know, uh, providing the infrastructure uh, to, to make sure that uh, the SMEs uh, flourish. I think the, the other aspect of SMEs is that, you know, I think it contributes towards the uh, geographical development of the country. I mean, it's not just about Delhi or Bombay. Yes. I mean, it is about, uh, as was mentioned, you know, on the, on the rural parts that uh, SMEs are, are the one which are going to foster uh, development all across the country. Yeah. And, uh, and, and this is something which is not going to happen if you don't support them. I mean, sure. uh, because they are, I think, somewhere in terms of national development, I think SMEs also have a huge socioeconomic impact. Of, economic impact. Yes. Okay, with that, I think uh, we'll need to end this discussion. Thank you so much for, uh, for your time, each of the panelists. Thanks for uh, taking time out. Please remain on stage. We have the unveiling, and we'd like you to participate. Here. The much-awaited Business World SME White Book 2012-13, presented by Reliance Commercial Finance. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the much-awaited moment. We finally unveil the Business World SME White Book 2012-2013, presented by Reliance Commercial Finance.